do attractive parents have more girls? Uh, and I guess I first read that more broadly, not as attractive, but sort of, you know, higher quality, whatever that means, which would be a direct allusion to the Trivers Willard hypothesis, which uh, was published in mid seventies, probably, which suggests that, um, because put humans aside for the moment, uh, because the variability in reproductive success is so much greater for males than it is for females. That is, um, that, females, uh, no matter how many matings they get, no matter what the social system is, tend to have, you know, roughly two surviving offspring that make it into the next generation that then go on to reproduce themselves. That is, they exactly replace themselves in a, in a stable population situation. Whereas males have a highly variable number of offspring and, um, how many they have varies greatly by the number of reproductive opportunities that they find for themselves or make for themselves. So the prediction of the Trivers Willard hypothesis is that uh, the higher the quality offspring you can produce, the more likely you are to produce males because because males have such a greater variability in reproductive success, you want to make sure that your highest quality offspring are more likely to be males with a higher variability, with a higher chance of getting more offspring themselves. This is a purely genetic argument. Uh, and obviously with humans, where we tend towards monogamy and where female beauty in particular is uh, a, a big predictor of um, basically wealth acquisition and also reproductive success, this may, this may at least um, mitigate the effects of Trevor's Willard or even flip it on its head. Wait, wait, wait. I was with you until that last Okay. Question. Well, I didn't say it will. I said yeah. it, it may. No, no. I, I thought where you were headed mm -hmm. um, is that uh, all else being equal, a very important phrase here, all else being equal, um, prettier women should tend to have male offspring because of the downstream consequences of beauty in mating and dating. So not only- Of, of male beauty? No, I thought we were talking about female beauty, right? Well, but so you just said women, beautiful women should be more likely to have male offspring. Yep. But if it's because of the role of female beauty in mating and dating, why wouldn't why wouldn't you expect a flip of Trivers Willard because uh beautiful women would be more likely therefore to uh to themselves again attract more high quality mates. Yeah, higher quality mates. They would they would they would tend to marry up and therefore the chances that a male offspring that they produce would be successful would be higher than if we take uh, their beauty out of the equation and we figure out where they would have made it in the hierarchy uh, based on other characteristics. So if a woman can marry up, it should increase the chances of her producing male offspring because the offspring will be better placed to uh, reproduce themselves and she's less likely to produce dead ends. So how is that different? How 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 does the human situation? That, that's just a classic Trivers Willard argument. Yep. That doesn't change in any way. Like so, the the fact of female beauty or not actually doesn't even belong in that conversation. It, it's changed the argument not at all. <clears throat> well, right. I think this is standard Trivers Willard. I don't know. I I have yet to see why why the logic would reverse here. Um, it's just that beauty plays a certain role in human mating and dating. And Be, so does, I mean, because there's choice, because because both men and women choose, yeah, mates, right? right. Um, to to a greater degree than uh, really is found in just about any other mammals, and there are a number of monogamous species of birds, but um, in in a mostly monogamous species as as we are, where you have choice on um, both parts, and where female beauty and specifically indicators of youth and fertility are highly prized across culture, uh, you m might expect a woman with those characteristics um, to exactly want to replicate them in her daughters because she will want daughters who will be similarly chosen um, by also highly ranked men because female beauty doesn't necessarily convert into the indicators of success for men, right? Like, yes. you know, if, if success for men is often about wealth and, um, and, you know, later in life success. Now I get your argument. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I still think it goes the other way precisely because of the thing that sits at the bottom of the Trivers Willard analysis, which is that the variance for women is lower. And therefore, mm -hmm. so first of all, I'm imagining- Even, no, matter, no matter what else is true about humans, still, there's only so many kids a woman can have in her lifetime, and the number of kids a man can have in his lifetime is basically unbounded, but don't try. Right. But so anyway, just, just to complete it, 
if woman, so first of all, there is there's several layers playing into this discussion. Yeah. One is that a beautiful woman is likely genetically well endowed and has had access to resources that, or her mother did, that right. would result in you know this is one of the things that Bob Trivers has looked deeply into, um, is the fluctuating fluctuating asymmetry. facial asymmetries. Right. And yeah. basically, we find symmetry uh, pleasing, and so a woman who is beautiful likely is genetically well endowed and has also had a developmental environment that was hostile. Hospitable, um, which uh, you know, some of this is heritable and some of it isn't. Right. But a beautiful woman is probably, if those characteristics are right, if she's especially symmetrical for one thing, she may also. It's not that her. It's not that she is capable of producing female beauty. She is likely capable of producing beautiful, well put together offspring of either sex. She is also capable of commanding more in the mating and dating market, and therefore. She, you know, let's just say that <coughs> male quality, physical quality doesn't even matter, right? Mm -hmm. Certain things like a higher position in society, she can marry somebody who has a higher position in society, which increases the chances that her offspring will be able to find mates. Although until, until very recently, until post-industrial cultures, often higher position in society for males needed to be vetted with uh, tests of physical prowess early on. Yep. I still, I still think that all these things point in the same direction, that which is that whatever it is the female beauty is a proxy for, whether it is, you know, mediated through males who are choosing, mm -hmm. or whether it is mediated through nature and her ability to produce offspring that are well structured. Mm -hmm. In both cases, the unsettling and uncomfortable conclusion of Trevor's Willard is if you have some reason to know that your offspring are liable to be. Um, more capable than average rather than less capable than average, then you should tend to produce males. And in mm -hmm. a more cert uncertain context, you should tend to produce females. And that female beauty, if it does anything, it tells you she should be more likely to produce males because she's more likely to produce males that are well-positioned and well-structured. Fair enough. Okay. We could, we could, of course, go on for hours, as we probably will later. Yes, we could. <laughs> off camera. Um, and I will say, and maybe correct me, I, I, you know, I didn't, didn't see this question coming, but I think... I don't know that Trivers Willard has been investigated with regard to mechanism in humans or even investigated necessarily in humans at all, but it has been looked at in some species of mammals where the mechanism actually appears to possibly be choice of the egg, now, by the egg of particular sperm, because mammals have chromosomal sex determination, um, I believe, and I, you know, I it's possible I'm just making this up, but I, but I think I think I remember um, one or two papers suggesting that basically the egg knows, and obviously none of this is conscious, we're using this evolutionary shorthand, but that the egg can tell X sperm versus Y sperm in a mammal, and BZ versus W sperm in a bird, no. Actually, in birds, it's going to be totally different because they've got this different sex as heterogametic in, in birds. Um, but in mammals, X sperm versus Y sperm, the egg can tell, and therefore the egg can make choices based on the sex of the sperm that is approaching them and appears to do so. I will try to find that find that to make sure that I'm not making it up for yep. the next time. 